As games have evolved from the basic run, jump, shoot fare of the 80s and 90s into the complex, nuanced art forms we know today, what we can actually do in them has grown at an exponential rate. So why do we waste so much of our time on pointless actions? From crafting to cooking, horse riding to house decorating, we have seemingly unlimited ways to experience our favourite games and can tailor our experiences accordingly across hundreds of hours. Our modern day controllers too offer a level of control and input which would have been dismissed as witchcraft back in the good old retro days. With this multitude of input-output combinations coupled with the complexity and immersion of modern games, developers are constantly creating new and exciting mechanics to bake into our games. While some of the features and mechanics which are prevalent in modern gaming are literal game changers we couldn't do without today, there are plenty of others that developers have thrown in for no good reason. Still, when are you not going to explore every facet of a given game? And with that, I am Kirsten from What Culture Gaming, and these are 10 pointless video game mechanics gamers still use. Number 10, chores around the camp. Red Dead Redemption. Unlike some entries on this list, the chores which Arthur Morgan can complete around the gang campsite do actually have a legitimate benefit in Red Dead Redemption 2, but are still ultimately pretty pointless. Alongside more menial tasks such as shaving, cleaning his clothes, reading news snippets and staring wistfully at old photographs, Arthur can perform basic jobs to keep the camp ticking over. Whether picking up hay bales and feeding the horses, chopping firewood or collecting water from the river to fill up the wash basin, completing these daily tasks result in an increase in Arthur's honour and can also yield stat boosts. That being said, should the player choose not to engage in these activities, the other members of your gang will simply complete them for you. The jobs still need doing regardless of who does them. Whilst completing these camp chores does afford the player additional honour, it does not move the story along nor improve Arthur's stats to such a degree as to make it a vital part of the gameplay. Instead, the time spent around the camp is relegated to a mere palate cleanser, a period of calm before the next bullet-filled storm. Number 9. The Mario Button Luigi's Mansion 3 more than just a pointless throwaway feature, this one is actually loved by fans of the series. In the original Luigi's Mansion on GameCube, players could press the A button to have Luigi call out his brother's name while skulking around the titular mansion. The pitch and cadence of the Mario changed depending on how frightened the green-clad plumber was at the time, and it's obvious just how much fun Charles Martinet had whilst recording these lines, and with the panic and fear increasing in intensity with each take. Controlling Luigi, we sneak around a corner, inquiring, Mario? As we go, only to spot a terrifying, or not terrifying, ghost. Mario! He shouts in panic. That's pretty much it, but the fans can't get enough. Pragmatically speaking, Luigi does not acquire any upgrades for his trusty poltergust goo by calling out Mario's name, nor does he gain the ability to jump, for example. It's literally useless beyond making us smile. The Mario button, therefore, is another example of developers adding a little flourish to the proceedings, providing a cute little feature for gamers to discover, which in this case is one which has captured the imagination of Luigi's Mansions fans the world over. Number 8. Activate or deactivate the lightsaber. Jedi Fallen Order Jedi Fallen Order was a triumphant return to form for EA following the well-documented controversy surrounding Star Wars Battlefront 2. In this game, young Jedi apprentice Cal Kestis must form a ragtag alliance and travel across the galaxy in an attempt to restore both his connection to the Force and the Jedi Order as a whole. With his lightsaber by his side, the Force as his ally, and his trusty droid BD-1 on his back, Cal can do anything he sets his mind to. He can also just stand in one spot, turning his lightsaber on and off. There's just something about lightsabers. We can't help igniting the blade and hearing the famous, infinitely satisfying Ben Burt sound effect. We give it a quick swing, then deactivate the blade, resulting in the equally pleasing sound of the extinguished blade retreating back into the exquisitely crafted hilt. There's hours in it, though it is a literal waste of time. Just finally, on Jedi Fallen Order, an honourable mention has to go to Cal's ability to switch out his poncho on the fly, which effectively amounts to our young Jedi changing his top mid-battle. Absolutely pointless, but we do it anyway. Number 7, Emotes. Elder Scrolls Online, or anything else for that matter. The Elder Scrolls Online is one of the biggest, most complex, most enduring MMORPGs in modern gaming. It's also more than 200 gigabytes on PS4. 
With constant updates from Bethesda, endless numbers of quests, delves and dolmens to run either solo or in parties, hundreds of game hours won't even scratch the surface of what this title has to offer. You can also spend an equal number of hours dancing like a Khajiit while your mate plays the flute. The quantity of emotes available in ESO is as impressive as it is baffling, encompassing everything from cheering or haranguing passers-by, the aforementioned musical interludes, drinking, posing and everything in between. Between. And the point of these actions? Absolutely nothing. You gain literally nothing by stopping to prance and posture, yet this is undoubtedly one of the most utilised mechanics in the entire grand adventure, and YouTube is virtually overflowing with the evidence. Elder Scrolls Online is not alone in this indictment, with the obvious Fortnite also implicit alongside other titles like PUBG and Star Wars Battlefront 2. Emotes are useless and impractical, they annoy us and waste time which could be better spent completing quests and levelling up our heroes. Having said that, you grab those drums, I'm on the loot. Number 6. Stance Flip – Mortal Kombat Injustice Scientists, psychologists, scholars and archaeologists the world over are at a loss to explain exactly what the purpose of changing your stance in fighting games such as Mortal Kombat and the Injustice games actually is. For all intents and purposes, the developers have allocated a special button on the controller to just turning round a bit. The player presses said button and their character does a little hop, and where once we saw their front, we now see their back. That is literally it, there's nothing more to it than that. To be fair, some players may be able to more easily work out special moves and button combos whilst viewing their character from a certain angle, but this is by no means a key feature of combat. What we really use this button for is to annoy our opponents. Continually pressing this button will see your character jump on the spot, turning their shoulders left and right between orthodox and southpaw stance, not to gain a tactical advantage, not to charge up a meter, no. We do this just to annoy and distract our hapless adversary. Complete madness. Madness. Number 5. Taunting – Super Smash Bros Ultimate Taunting in Super Smash Bros is yet another classic example of a mechanic which serves absolutely no purpose, but one whose usage is rife among the player base. Each and every character in Super Smash Bros Ultimate, which is a lot, has at least three preset taunt animations at their disposal, assigned to corresponding directions on the D-pad. Whether it's Cloud twirling his buster sword before placing it behind his back, Link holding the master sword in a classic hero pose, or Street Fighter's Ryu tightening his headband and saying, come on! Each of these many and varied taunts can take around 4 seconds to complete, leaving your character wide open to attack. In a fast, frenetic, frenzied and other things beginning with F fighting game like Smash Bros, those 4 or 5 seconds are absolutely crucial, and could well be the difference between victory and defeat, so players avoid taunting for the aforementioned reasons, correct? Mm, no. Every time you knock an opponent off the stage, launch them off the screen entirely, or hit them with a final smash special move, it would be the height of bad manners not to throw in a little shimmy to remind your opponent of their demonstrable inadequacies. Number 4. Cooking Skyrim Oh Skyrim, you are the gift that keeps on giving. That a game which debuted in 2011 is still being played today on the most current generation of systems is remarkable, and stands as a testament just to how legendary this title truly is. Skyrim is one of those games where it is not only possible but arguably encouraged for the player to spend hundreds of hours in this world of dragons, magic, and without moving the plot alongside one iota. As a Nord, Khajiit, Argonian, or any other race and class of your choosing, you can explore, hunt, steal, and kill to your heart's content without ever visiting the Greybeards or High Hrothgar. You can also cook delicious and fortifying meals using the cooking pots found at various campsites in the wilderness. The problem is, there's really no point. While it's true that cooking and ultimately consuming meals will restore your magicka health or stamina, so will simply resting for an in-game hour. Yes, cooking can grant you temporary buffs, but so can the consumption of ready-made potions and tinctures. Cooking is something every Skyrim player either has done in the past or continues to do to this day. In reality, however, there's just no real point. Number 3. Flourish Weapon – Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic of all the entries on this list, this particular one perhaps epitomises the topic at hand more so than the most. 
Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is widely considered one of the best Star Wars games and one of the best action RPGs ever made. Full of intrigue and drama, chock full of story defining decisions and dialogue choices, Knights of the Old Republic is a true gaming masterpiece set in that famous galaxy far, far away. There's also a button which makes you twirl your blaster. Whether your character is wielding a blaster, twin vibro blades, or a double bladed lightsaber, you can, at the tap of a button, flourish your weapon in the ultimate display of galactic badassery. Obviously, this works best when sporting two lightsabers, as the accompanying sound is still epic to this day. But anything can be spun, twirled, flipped, and brandished with so much style as to make the eponymous Mandalorian blush. Again, however, there is nothing to be gained here. No meter to charge, no HP to be recovered, no initiative roll to be won. It's literally just for show. But boy, is it satisfying. Number two, Whistling, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Pokemon Sword and Shield are the latest and greatest entries in the beloved Pokemon series. Whilst they didn't redefine the Pokemon formula as Breath of the Wild did for The Legend of Zelda, they at least tried to innovate and introduce some new mechanics to the proceedings. Amongst such skills as cycling, cooking up curries, pitching tents, stop it, and Dynamaxing in battle, your custom character can also whistle to attract wild Pokemon. Of the Pokemon themselves in Sword and Shield, they are abundant enough in number and ubiquitous enough throughout your daily travels that there is no real need to have to intentionally summon them. In fact, such is the frequency with which you'll encounter these catchable critters that you're actually more likely to try to avoid them than you are to intercept them. Then why the whistle? Why not, is the answer. Whistling in the tall grass, new album title right there, to attract Pokemon, then running away from them is a game in and of itself. Despite serving zero discernible purpose, it's just dumb fun. It's also worth mentioning that being mapped to L3, you usually just end up whistling by accident by applying too much pressure to the stick, which is annoying. Number one, honking the horn, Mario Kart 8. The horn. Each and every cart and bike in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has the horn. Stop it. What does it do, I hear you ask? It goes honk when you press it. But if every vehicle has it, it must be useful, right? No, it just goes honk. Great news, if you press it near an opponent, they'll jump in their seats for a split second, startled as they are by the sudden and unexpected honk. The original Mario Kart 8 for Wii U went one further in the grand stakes of paralyzing futility by letting you honk the horn using the gamepad touchscreen. A big red button appeared on the pad, which, when pressed, you guessed it, went honk. So we've established the number inanity of this insipid mechanic, so all that's left to do is to determine whether anybody actually used it. And that's the thing. If we are all truly honest with ourselves, swear to Ganon, cross your heart container and hope to lose a life, we all did. The horn in Mario Kart 8 is undoubtedly the ultimate example of an absolutely pointless video game mechanic that gamers still use, and continue to use to this day. One for the road? Honk. And that's our list. Do you still use any of these video game mechanics? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I've been Kirsten from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next one.